you know, having done this business now for 40 years, having been a deal maker, a marketer, a manager, um, done a lot of different roles, at this point in my career, I consider myself more than anything a teacher. And uh, as many of you may know, I've had the honor of managing Michael Jordan for his entire career. Uh, and when he wrote a, one of his many books, and he introduced sort of the cast of characters of his life, uh, he said, David Falk, he quote, he taught me the business. There are probably very few things he could have said that would have been more complimentary to me th than what he said, because I think that in America, um, I think education is, is our number one uh, area that we need to do a way better job of doing. We're falling very far behind in the Western democracies in education, uh, and I think it's something that, that I put a great deal of emphasis on, and the chance to teach young people about business and uh, responsibility, social responsibility, is something very, very near and dear to my heart. When I was growing up, my mother had a mantra that she drilled into my head over and over again. Uh, and I must admit that I did the same thing with my own daughters. And that mantra was always shoot for the stars and never settle for second best. Um, as the daughter of immigrant parents, um, you know, she, was, she herself was, was pushed very hard to succeed. And so people, you know, one of the great things, unlike your industry, where you have talking heads on, you know, like MSNBC and stuff, talk about the performance of the market. In the sports industry, everything that you do is critiqued. And unfortunately, most of the people who critique it don't have a clue really to what you're doing or what you're thinking or why you did the things you did, but it doesn't stop them from critiquing you. And so people have told me over my career that I am arrogant, short-sighted, greedy, you know, and a host of other things less complimentary. And I always tell them, I'm just trying to live out my mother's credo. The thing that drives me isn't greed or money. It's, it's trying, I'm a very achievement-oriented person. Um, and I think that most highly successful people are driven by things, you know, alien, alien to money or fame or a place in the sun, just something internally that drives them. I'm a very opinionated person, in case you haven't gleaned that in the first 10 minutes. And I'm not afraid of expressing my opinions. Um, so I've developed a lot of theories in business that I borrowed from either uh, Hollywood for t names or um, songs. So one of my favorite theories is the Godfather theory. Has anyone seen The Godfather? My favorite movie of all time. Uh, I'm, this isn't like Syracuse where I'm going to call on you to ask questions. I usually call on my students and ask them, okay, tell me what the opening scene in The Godfather 1 is. So Marlon Brando is at his daughter's wedding in Long Beach, Long Island at the family compound. And there's dancing and festivities going on outside. Uh, and inside, Marlon Brando is in his office and he's seeing people who are paying him tribute. So the undertaker comes up to him and says, Godfather, my daughter was on a date with these two thugs and they beat her up. I want you to kill him. And he said, I'm sorry, you know, we don't do that, but I'll take care of it. So he turns to one of his lieutenants, I believe it's Tessio, and in a very quiet voice, he says, I want you to take care of this for me. So I ask my students when I teach, why does the Godfather talk so quietly? And they all tell me, because Marlon Brando had gauze in his mouth. I said, no, no, <laughs> that's not what I'm asking. I'm saying, why does Don Corleone talk so quietly? And they said, I don't know. And I said, because he's the Godfather. He has all the power. He doesn't have to scream. And so as I matured in business, I try to adhere to the Godfather theory that if you have a lot of power or a lot of influence or you're very persuasive, you don't have to talk loudly to get your point across. People will respect you and it's sort of an inverse proportion. The louder you talk or you read the newspaper if you follow sports where an agent will come out and say, the team is screwing my client. I always said, God, what a horrible admission that you're doing a terrible job. Be like if you were a financial advisor and you said, my client is losing a lot of money as investments. You say, oh, who's the dumb moron that's putting him in these investments? So I always felt that if you have power and influence, you want to hold yourself out as a person of influence, that you should try to sort of speak softly and carry a big stick.